Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today I want to talk about uh, these two guys. So this is a 28BYJ-48 stepper motor. It is one of the cheapest stepper motors you can get online. They come in, I believe, 5 volts and 12 volt versions. This one is a 5 volt. And typically they are paired up with these guys. Uh, it's a ULN 2003AN, uh, but this is the module version, so it has a little plug that you can plug the stepper motor in. Uh, if you need a stepper motor, this guy is your cheapest option and you can control it with four pins on your Arduino. If you have any sort of load to move with it though, I would move on. Uh, these guys are notorious for skipping steps and stripping gears. So this would be light loads only. So let's get started. Uh, I'll show you this module, then the stepper motor, and we will go from there. Starting up with the ULN 2003AN modules. As you can see, uh, this one here, since it's designed specifically for our stepper motors, it only uses four input pins. So that's really all you need from your Arduino. Uh, also, the voltage in here says 5 to 12, but make sure to respect the voltage level on your stepper. The ones we are using today are 5 volts, so I put 5 volts in there. Um, however, the stepper motor does consume quite a bit of current, about 250 milliamps, so do not use the 5 volts from the Arduino you do need an external supply. I mean, preferably, you just have an external supply and you power both this and the Arduino off the 5 volts instead of using the Arduino's 5 volts to, you know, uh, power this thing. I, I don't think the regulator will survive if you power the stepper motor from it. Next up, we have the module itself. Then we have the plug. Plug is made perfectly for the stepper motor plug fits perfectly in there and then we have uh, four LEDs and four resistors for those LEDs just to show us which channels are going. Uh, generally though you'll be driving this thing too fast so that uh, actually you these are kind of useless they're going to be quite dim. As for the stepper motor it is a five wire unipolar stepper motor design. Um, it is geared so the shaft is off center. If you look online there are nice schematics that will tell you the measurements of this, the offsets of everything. Uh, these things are actually used all over the place. Uh, it, wherever precise uh, motion is needed for cheap like uh, inside the uh, fins like the directional uh, vents of an AC unit or a bedding machine or stuff like that. Um, I've seen a lot of websites call this a 2048 step per revolution because uh, it's geared, uh, 64 to 1 gear reduction on the inside. And some of them say uh, 2038, you're going to have to experiment with that. We're going to need that later on in the code, I will show you. And yeah, just make sure on the back side here that you check whether it's a 5 or a 12 or a 9 volt stepper motor. I think the difference is... Uh, the amount of windings inside and the you know thickness of the insulation. I have actually found that this thing heats up quite a bit so using it for long periods of time may not be advised uh, but it, I actually dropped the voltage below 5 volts to test and below 5 volts it's not too bad. I think I was down about 3 volts. It still worked but again uh, the amount of force it'll have will be less and I think if you're going to be using this with any kind of force it's probably best to find a different solution. Okay, let's quickly go over the wiring that's going to work for all of my examples today. Um, basically, 5 volts and ground on this breadboard, which is actually coming from a USB. It's not going through these little regulators. So it should be high current and not low current like these guys would give. So 5 volts and ground are both going to 5 volts and ground on the Arduino and also 5 volts and ground on this module. Make sure you be careful the ground is towards the edge there. Uh, next thing is pins 8, 9, 10, and 11 on the Arduino are going to pin 1, 2, 3, and 4 on this module. So it has to be in that order for these examples to work. All my examples, by the way, are going to be in the description below in that GitHub link. I am not a coder. Use at your own risk. I also hot glued a um, dowel to the end of the stepper motor so it's more easy to see what's going on. So let me plug this in, we'll see what the stepper motor does and we'll go over the code together. So the first example is pretty simple. In fact it doesn't do very much interesting at all. It just basically spins this dowel 360 degrees and in fact 
it'll keep doing that forever if I let it go. Um, again, I wouldn't put a lot of load onto this, but something like this, that's not much of a problem. Let me show you what the code is like, and you'll see how simple this is to implement. Here's the code fully printed out, and it's in fact very short. Uh, I could have even made it shorter, but uh, it was late last night. I am not a programmer, so I have some edits in here. But this is the basics. So first and foremost, we want to include the Arduino stepper library. There is an, an actual stepper library that we can use and we do use. So you just go um, uh, hash include stepper.h. And then you have to do a little bit of setup. So this is before the void setup here, just on the very top. We want to set how many steps it takes to do a full revolution. Now again, some sources said 2048. Some said uh, 2038, was it? I don't have my notes with me. Uh, I just went with 2048 in this case. So constant int steps per revolution, 2048. Then also here in my notes, I said use pin 8 to 11 on the Arduino and plug that into uh, in 1 to N4, so 8 to 1, uh, 9 to 2, etc, etc. Uh, then you do a stepper, and then stepper name, I just named it stepper name, it can be whatever you want. Uh, so stepper, stepper name, whatever you want here, equals stepper, and then open bracket, steps per revolution, okay, that's this one here, that's why we made it an int, so we can just change it up here instead of elsewhere in the code. Um, comma 8, comma 10, okay, notice the order there, comma 9, comma 11. I've seen a couple examples do it like this, I've seen a couple examples do it the other way where it's 8, 9, 10, 11. I don't really know what the difference is, I went with this for the examples. So that's it, on the top we go void setup, we want to set the RPM of our stepper motor, okay, you can do this uh, down there too, but don't worry about it for now. It's up here, so stepper name, that's the name we gave it up here, dot uh, set speed brackets 5, so that's 5 RPM in this example. So if we just make it step, it'll take 5 turns in 1 minute. Alright, and then the loop, basically the meat and potatoes of our uh, stepper here, is just stepper name, the name we gave it, dot step, and then we gave it an amount of steps. In this case, I gave it steps per revolution, to just make it spin continuously. So we're, we keep sending a, hey, do 360 degrees for me, and just over and over and over. So let's see what that looks like with the whole thing hooked up. Isn't this just the physical embodiment of if I can do it, so can you. The code is super simple, and we get a spinning stepper motor with uh, several, only a couple lines of code. I like it. Now let's see if we can add a tiny little bit of complexity and make this a little bit more useful. We have the exact same concept as before, the only difference is that pin 7 is now connected to a switch and that switch is connected to ground. So every time I click the switch the Arduino will know about it. What does the switch do? Well, in this case I simply programmed it to spin the stepper motor 90 degrees for every time we press. So this is a bit more useful because you can actually, you know, use this to advance something, you can use it to change positions, etc, etc. So this is the benefit of a stepper motor. A regular motor can go around and around, but it takes a stepper motor to go a controlled amount of degrees. And in fact, this thing will just keep going whenever I send it a button press. Let's take a look at the code for this one. Nothing to be afraid of here again, so we're just going to include the stepper library, stepper.h, this is default on all Arduinos. Um, define an input pin, okay, so int button press pin, in this case is pin 7, you can pick any digital in. Um, then we define a boolean to track the, bu the button press, so bool button pressed. Pretty simple. And then we have this same thing here, steps per revolution. We initialize our stepper over here, and again, I've just called it stepper name. You can call it whatever you want. And then, in the setup, I have the speed. We can change the speed to turn to change the speed of it going around. Then we also set the pin mode to that the pin seven up there, button press pin, to input 
pull-up. I love the input pull-up rather than the input because then the pin is always pulled up to 5 volts and so now all we have to do is check when it's pulled down to ground. No resistors are needed. It could be a good idea to add a resistor uh, between the switch and ground but I didn't in this case and it works just fine. It's just probably not best practice. So then we set our button press boolean to a known value. I think you could do that up there, but I decided to do it here just in case. So our button pressed is true just by default. Next we move on to the loop. And in the loop, all we do is we check the state of the button pin and save it into our boolean. So the first thing the Arduino is going to do is going to set the boolean to a digital read of the button press pin. So if it's still pulled high, it'll just be true. If it's uh, pulled low, it'll be false. Then if our Boolean is false, which we just set here, so if it detects a ground, then our stepper, we're gonna make it step, the steps per revolution divided by four. Well, if 2048 is a full revolution, if we divide that by four, we get a quarter of a revolution, AKA uh, 90 degrees. So you can actually set this to 512 steps and it'll still do 90 degrees. But in this case, uh, doing it this way, you can change this divider to whatever, to have as many you know steps as you want. That's what I did there. I set a delay of 50 milliseconds. I don't know if that's necessary, but I like to do that to stabilize any time you do in, you know, uh, an if loop. Then we're going to reset our button pressed to true. So basically it should then exit the loop, not come back through until there is another ground. I also find this helps for debouncing the switch too. So yeah, this is all you need to do some relatively complex behavior. Incredible what you can do with just a little bit of Arduino C and a few dollars worth of modules. Uh, if it looks like it skips a step, it doesn't. It's just my switch comes out of this breadboard pretty easily. Let's move on to the next one. Gonna have to do this one quickly because, uh, yeah, I'm not a good programmer. I'm just trying to demonstrate some stuff. Uh, here we go. We now have two switches, uh, one on each side of the stick. The stick will go hit the switches on either side. The switches are connected to pin six and seven and the other side of the switch goes to ground. So basically every time this popsicle stick hits a switch, it will ground it, uh, which, and then the Arduino will pick that up and will reverse the direction. Now, the way I program this is pretty crap, but it does function. So here we go. Just showing you that you can reverse the uh, stepper motor. So there it's pressed, and it comes back the other way. Oh no, it's supposed to come back the other way. There we go. <laughs> So yeah, um, I think there's a better way to program this, uh, but what I'm going to do is this illustrates what I wanted to illustrate, the use of uh, limit switches and uh, inputs and the changing directions on the stepper. So it'll do for this example. I don't recommend you use this code verbatim because it ain't great. Either way though, <laughs> let me show you how it works. Well, here we go. Don't forget, this code is garbage, but it does work, sort of. Um, oh, I made a mistake here. That's okay, let's move on. Uh, so, define some limit pins uh, after including the stepper.h. Uh, first limit, seven, second limit, six. This is just, these are the pins we are going to use right there. Um, then define some booleans to track the limit switch statuses. This is just to, uh, you know, track them or initially um, set them up. Uh, I put E2 state false should be true. That'll be fixed on the final version. Uh, and then revolution val zero, don't know why I did that, should be 100 and it will be fixed in the final version as well. Oh, look, I told you, this is garbage. Uh, then we set up our stepper, same as before, except this time we don't need a steps per revolution uh, be variable because it doesn't appear anywhere else in this um, in this program. So I just replace it with the amount of steps uh, 2048 here. So that's good to go. Uh, then void setup, same thing, call it stepper name, set the speed, uh, and then set the pin modes. Uh, first limit and second limit, that's pin uh, six and seven on the Arduino. 
into input pull-ups. Pull-ups are just really convenient, don't have to add any external things. Then we give uh, 100 steps to our revolution val. You'll see where that comes in very shortly. All right, so now the first thing the loop is going to do is check the state of the limit switches. Okay, so the uh, E1 state, which is our booleans that will store if our limit switches are on or off, uh, equals, you know, whatever the first limit is. It'll read and see if the if the limit switch has been hit. Same thing with E2 state, but for the second limit, uh, then we're going to make it step, make the stepper motor step, the amount that we set in the revolution val, which was 100, if you remember correctly. Uh, so we actually had our, you know, one too many. This line should go away. Should be good enough to do it up top. Then, now we have our stepper motor turning, okay? Now, if any limit switch is pressed, or grounded in this case, which was which is pressed, reverse the direction of the motor. So revolution val equals revolution val times minus 1. So if it was 100 at first, it'll become minus 100. And if you put a negative step value, then your stepper motor is going to spin the opposite direction. And then, in order to make it, like, sort of remove itself from where the... So it press the switch and then it has to turn around and go the other way, I had to add this line to make it move away from the switch, which is make it step. So we multiply it by minus 1 to get minus 100, and then we make it step 100 steps in the other direction, so it relieves pressure off of the, um, of the switch. Then we turn E1 state back to true, so, you know, it'll check, it'll, it, it'll only be triggered again when the switch gets pressed again. And then we have a delay of 500 uh, milliseconds in order to stop it from going through the loop too quickly and then, you know, all reading the state of that switch again before the stepper has had time to move off of it. There probably is, no, I, there absolutely is a better way to do it, but this is how I did it. And as you saw, it worked, you know, 50% of the time it worked every time. Then we do the same if statement for the E2 state, that's the other limit switch. And same thing, we just keep multiplying by, by minus one, so every time it hits uh, stop, it'll go the other way. If you hit the same stop twice, it'll still turn, turn around because this makes the same check. We could add another variable to check which one of the switches are being hit and change the direction based on which one was hit, but I thought I would just keep it simple and look, this whole code fits on one page. That's all, the, that's all there is. And, you know, I wrote it myself. So, there we go. And so, there you have it. There's three examples. Um, the three examples aren't great, but they will get you going. They will get you started. Oh, look, my glue undid itself. Well, good thing I got my footage before that happened. Um, now, if you have a challenge for me, a project I can do with this stepper motor, um, let me know in the comments below. I will be selecting one and I will be doing one unless there is no good uh, examples, in which case I'll have to, or, or projects, I'll have to figure out my own. But the goal is I've learned how to use this. I think I know the basic functions and so do you after this video. Let me know what you want me to do with this. And if it's not too complicated, you know, I don't want to take a year. I will give it a shot. Thanks for watching.